Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you are doing well. Today, we're going to be covering this article from the LA Times, The Myths and Realities of the Toxic Star Wars Fan Base from a Comic-Con Perspective, because that's the perspective that all of us wanted, right? We all wanted to know what the fan base, what it seems like from a Comic-Con perspective. Let's see what they have to say. So... First off, there was no official Star Wars film panel at Comic-Con this year, but on Saturday afternoon, the fandom came together in the name of Rose Tico. Yes, justice for Tico. Tico is amazing. I am a Tico path for life. Ethan Man Skyver, I'm talking to you right now. I asked you for a Tico, for a Rose Tico action figure. I am still asking you right now. Please, I know you've got plenty. Give me a Rose Tico action figure, please. But... Oh, this is fantastic. This is wonderful. But also, I think my favorite part of that first <laughs> that first paragraph, I guess it's yeah, I guess you can call it a paragraph is there was no official Star Wars film panel at Comic-Con. Well, why do you think that's the case? Now, some people might say, "Oh, well, there's no movie to promote at this point." But I really think that if Star Wars was doing really well right now, they would have no doubt had a film panel talking about what's going on with Episode 9. There is no doubt in my mind. Again, it's a year and a half out. That would be the perfect opportunity to build up the film. So this tells me, or at least my own perspective on this, is that it tells me that they are kind of hesitant about this. They are still doing some things behind the scenes. They are still making certain decisions. They are still you know, playing around with what they're going to do. And it's going to be very interesting to see what they actually do with this. So it goes on. While the Rally for Rose event was a cel- was celebratory in nature, dozens of Comic-Con attendees cosplayed as Kelly Marie Tran's famed Last Jedi character. It was in response to a recent disturbance in the Force. What could it be? The event was organized as a way for fans to combat mostly online backlash against the actress. So here we go with the nonsense again. I'm surprised that they haven't mentioned, oh, when you remember when she left social media because of Star Wars backlash? No, actually she left social media because, one, she's you know, she probably wanted to get away with it while she's filming. And two, she's been very open about how she doesn't like social media in general because of how much time it takes away from all the other things that she's doing. Again, there's been no evidence to prove anything that these people have been trying to say about what actually happened. But man, look at that. Look at that. All those people dressed as Rose Tico, all those Rose Tico shirts. Oh, I want one of those. It's like, it's like the hope uh, image from, from when Obama was president. I want, I want a Rose shirt like that. That's great. Oh, this is fantastic. The nerds of color we are all Rose Tico. Well, I love how it's very inclusive there. We are all Rose Tico, and yet your group is called the Nerds of Color, but you know, what do I know about that? Tran, who was the first Asian-American actress to appear in a prominent role in any Star Wars film, removed her photos from social media accounts, presumably because of harassment. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There it is. There's the false narrative once again. Pres- at least they say presumably. There are other sites that will say, as if it's fact, that's the reason why she's left, even though, again, there's no evidence of it whatsoever, but... Oh, man. So, there has been criticism of General Leia Organa's use of the Force in Last Jedi, and there have been calls for Kathleen Kennedy, Shepard of the Star Wars movie legacy, to step down. Shepard. That is quite a word to use for her. She has been, if she has been a Shepard, she has been leading Star Wars to the slaughter because of the stupid business decisions that she's making. That is, that is not even just me, like, being frustrated and being angry. That's just looking at the... That's actually just looking at what's going on. That's looking at the facts. That's looking at the box office numbers. That's looking at the fan, like the fan base right now. And Jeremy says this all the time: is broken. There is a split in the fan base, and a lot of it has to do with the decisions that she has made as the executive producer of Lucasfilm, or whatever she's you know, the president of Lucasfilm. I guess she's an executive producer, or producer on all these films. So a lot of it has to do with the decisions that she has made, most significantly and most recently with Solo, where they've lost you know hundreds of millions of dollars on that film alone. But also, going back to Leia Organa, that was a really bad CGI moment in the film. So, again, people might not hate it as much as others, but you can't defend that as being a good moment in cinema. I'm sorry, there's just there's nothing from an objective standpoint to really point to. These are all fan-initiated events that have lately defined the group as a whole, labeling them as a toxic fan base. We hear that all the time. But is it fair? The loudest voice in the room is that is the one that's heard the most. The fans that have the most negative opinions are being the loudest right now, said Chris Polanski, a Star Wars fan the Times spoke with at the Comic-Con exhibition floor. It has it's had some unfortunate consequences, but for the most part, the fandom is great. And I love oh, I love how this oh, the fandom's doing well, the fandom's doing great. It's just these sick people who are racist and sexist. It's like, no. The Star Wars fandom is doing fine, but I would say it's from the opposite perspective. I would say that we're the ones who are the ones that are trying to keep Star Wars going forward because the people who are supporting the decisions of Lucasfilm and all these other people, I'm sorry, but they're the ones that are leading Star Wars off a cliff. So, again, I think it's all perception, I guess, in that case, but... 
Ah, oh, in the San Diego Con- Convention Center, located between the retail floor and the autograph area and sales pavilion, is a small corner of the con that houses societies and organizations looking to increase their reach. Among them each year are many of the Star Wars cosplay and charity organizations, chief among them being the 501st Legion, Vader's Fist, and the Rebel Alliance, an organization that visits hospitals and performs charity events regularly. That's awesome. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, the Mandalorian Mercs join the team this year. They have camped out of the corner of mid-level of the convention center. Uh, that is also the home of many popular card gaming rooms, like for the Pokemon and Magic the Gathering. I don't know how that's relevant, but okay. And I really think that this is showing. Again, there are some, there are so many positive elements to the fan base. And uh, the problem, too, is that you have this very, very small group, like less than 1% of people in general, not even just the Star Wars, but in general, who are sick, who are disgusting, who are you know hateful people. But the problem is, is that this group, you know, at least the person writing this article, will tie that, that very, very small group in with the people like us who are outspoken against Kathleen Kennedy. Notice how in the very beginning of the article, he talked about how being, you know people calling for Kathleen Kennedy being fired were part of this same group. And the problem is you cannot put this, you cannot put those people in the same group. It's one thing for there to be a person who is actually a racist, actually a sexist, and one person who is critical of a film, and rightly so, and critical of an executive who has done nothing but make bad financial decisions. And people will always say, oh, but what about The Force Awakens? It made $2 billion. Last Jedi, it made $1.3 billion. Yeah, but when you understand why those films made money, when you look at the trajectory of The Last Jedi compared to The Force Awakens, when you look at how the fans have been feeling about this, and when you look to how the fans have reacted, when you look to the fact that so many people are at the point, I mean, just read the comment sections of some of my videos, especially the ones on Star Wars, there are so many people who are done. People who have been in the theater, people who were in the theater in 1977 when the first Star Wars came out, they're giving up on it because of how bad it is now. It's not because of anything that I said or anything that anyone else said. It was the decision that they made on their own because when they came out of The Last Jedi, some people, even when they came out of The Force Awakens, they said, this isn't Star Wars. This, this is not what we grew up with. These are not well-made stories with well-crafted characters. And I think that every person that says those things is coming from a genuine place. It's coming from a place of love. And that's something that I see constantly in this community is love. So I don't like when people like this try and twist that to say that this community, this loving, awesome community is at all anywhere close to those very small, that very small group of disgusting people that exist. But guess what? No matter what organization you're a part of, no matter what you believe, there's always is going to be that small group because guess what humanity is flawed human nature is broken and so there's always no matter what you do no matter how hard you try you're never going to be able to break away from that the problem here though is that you cannot connect those people those you know as, as the word that they try to use that i love but unfortunately was ruined by one of these sjw's these troglodytes you cannot connect them with people like us who are just critical of the last jedi for legitimate reasons for narrative reasons you know for objective purposes and also critical of kathleen kennedy i'm sorry but why shouldn't a person man woman doesn't matter who has made decisions that have lost a studio hundreds of millions of dollars not be fired there's absolutely no reason all right, it's here that the question of a toxic fan base is posed. Obviously, these individuals are uber fans, but no one among them thinks that the rhetoric and actions of a few represent the whole. Once again, trying to tie in everyone with uh, the crazies. Jamie Diamond Dog Tobit, that's an awesome name, a member of the Imperial Sands Garrison of the 501st Legion, doesn't defend the descending voices but does understand them. Some people feel entitled about it because they're so wrapped up in it, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean they stop liking it. Maybe they're just trying to nudge it in another direction. I disagree with people saying that they want Kathleen Kennedy fired and stuff like that. It's just a story. It's a complicated story, though. It's a story that's gone on for decades. And so this is, again, someone trying to throw in that information, trying to say, see, obviously, the ones that want Kathleen Kennedy to stay, we're the sensible ones. We're the ones who understand what's going on. Trying to say that anyone that wants her gone are just a bunch of crazy people. No. No. Again, how do you defend someone greenlining a decision that made a movie lose $200 million? How do you defend that person and allow that person to keep their job? In almost any other circumstance, that person would have been gone, would have been moved around, would have, you know, her power would have been limited. But what's the difference here? I would be interested to see y'all's comments about that in the uh, comments below. The most vocal of the contingent seem to be the males, and some fans like Michelle Waxman, a member of the Rebel Alliance, see that as a part of the problem. Oh boy. 
I think a little bit of the toxic fan base is there because change is difficult and because it's male leads and is the past male story arcs with a female protagonist that's ascending in a big way that's a total that's that's a little different I think for some it's a tough pill to swallow I think it's an evolution in the right direction because there's so many female fans yes that is the reason that is the reason why there is so much hate is because we have a strong female character and us men us men we can't take that we can't take we cannot accept a woman we cannot accept them as being strong female characters we couldn't accept it back during alien and all the other alien films that came out because people kept going to see it guess what mostly male audiences we couldn't accept it when you had so many other strong female characters long before we had Rey, who is, guess what, not a strong female character. She is a Mary Sue character. She is just good at things for the sake of being good. There is no justification for being so good at the Force, for being good at pretty much anything. So, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's only because I'm I'm just a white male who doesn't understand my white privilege, and that's all that it is. That's what these people love to say. That's what these people love to try and spin these stories as, and it just it frustrates me so much because it's just not based in reality, and it's just ignoring the actual problems that are there. You can say all you want, Star Wars is fine, Kathleen Kennedy is fine, but you cannot ignore the box office numbers and the vast number of fans who have been just forgotten. And not just forgotten, but attacked even too. I mean, Chuck Wendig went on another one of his rants the other day, and um, I'm gonna probably do a video on that in the future because there's just so many things that he's done. But these people have been attacked, and all that they did was say, "I don't like the direction of Star Wars," not because the the lead character is female, but because these are really bad stories. These are very poorly done stories, and this is not what Star Wars should be. So once again, we have these people who just don't understand what is going on. And it's frustrating for me because I just don't see how they can't see it. Maybe it's a choice. Maybe it is something where they honestly don't think that there's anything wrong with what they're saying. But to me, it's just so clear. It's so obvious. I look at the chats that I have on this channel. I look at the vast number of people in this community. And what I see is I see a diverse community. And that's the other big problem is that they ignore that this fandom menace that we like to call it is diverse. Men, women of all different races and backgrounds coming together with one single voice that we don't like where, <laughs> where Star Wars is. And it has nothing to do with it being a female as the lead. It has everything to do with that character being a poorly written and weak character. I don't know how you can't understand that or why you can think that some sick people out there make up the entire group of people that want Kathleen Kennedy gone and want real change at Lucasfilm. But for some reason, it just it, it can't penetrate that head. I think there's a small contingent of guys that are the naysayers. I think they're getting a lot of weight out there editorially. They just seem to be getting a lot of print. The male fan base, it's kind of saturated. That's right. All that it is, it's purely based on the fact that I'm a male and there are apparently no other genders or no other ethnic backgrounds out there that have the same opinions that I do. Guarantee you, I'm going to have a lot of those people leaving comments in the chat. And I say this, if you are part of Lucasfilm, if you're a part of the LA Times, if you're a part of any of these groups and you are just living in this bubble, check the comments out of my video. Are there going to be a few sick people? Yeah, absolutely. But guess what? The vast majority are going to be sensible people of all different races, of all different sexes and backgrounds. Because that's what we are. We, we don't discriminate about, you know, we don't discriminate against anyone for any of those reasons. And I just, ah, it just, it's, it just frustrates me, guys. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just, I'm sorry to kind of be on a more serious tone today, but this stuff is just getting, it's getting so tiring to read the same thing over and over again and for it to just not be based on truth or fact at all or even common sense. Whether it's gender-based or not, the prevailing feeling is that it's an issue that should not take the entire fan base. And, of course, we've got, we've got another older Rose Tico there. So, guys, what are y'all's thoughts on this? You know, Do you think that the fan base is toxic? I honestly think that if anyone's toxic, it's these people in the news media who are constantly trying to spin the narrative, who are actually the ones trying to pit people against each other because they just take a story and spin it just like the Kelly Marie, Tran, Kelly Marie Tran story. I think that story would have not made would have not been so divisive for people if the media hadn't spun it the way they did. There are still some people to this day, because the media covered it in a certain way, who honestly believe that Kelly Marie Tran left Instagram for that reason, even though there has been no evidence. And if you try and bring that up to them, they are just so caught in their own mindset that they just immediately call you a racist, a sexist, or anything else. That's all they have. All they have are these names. All they have are these half-truths, sometimes even blatant lies. 
And that's the reason why what we're doing right now, what everyone on this YouTube community, everyone on Twitter, everyone that I've talked to, what we're doing is working. Whether it seems obvious or not, they will hear us very loud and clear. Again, solo losing $200 million, that's the first step. If they keep pushing this, if they keep attacking us, if they keep doing these things, just wait until episode nine. All right, guys, so sorry for a little bit of a serious tone today, but I'm just, I'm so frustrated with these things. So what are y'all thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate that. Also, please hit that like, hit that subscribe button as well. I would appreciate that too. We're being, we're getting very close to 2000, which means I'm going to be putting my Chewbacca onesie back on pretty soon for a live stream and probably doing some kind of eating of some food. Uh, for some reason, the people on my live streams really want me to be eating like a chicken and pretending like it's a pork, maybe getting a plush pork or something like that. Uh, who knows? I'm going to try and get some, uh, try and get some ideas and try and get some votes out on Twitter probably, but you know, stay tuned to that. But anyway, guys, have a great day. And as always, God bless.